Hey everyone, Shark here, and this video is a clip from our daily live stream where I go over the new quality of life improvements and updates coming to Genshin Impact. Make sure to tune into our live stream to see what's coming in version 4.6 on April 12th at 8am EST. We'll get a lot more information about the upcoming patch as well as free Primo gems that day, so you will not want to miss out. And with that, let me go over the new updates and I'll also share my thoughts about them. Alright, treasure compass optimizations and one click crafting with the Serena teapot. Uh, okay, let's take a look. So, treasure compass, Serena teapot, doesn't look like they're adjusting many things that we wanted, but sure, I guess this is nice. Newest developers have arrived, brought to you some optimizations about the treasure compass. I don't know how many people were asking for this. Up to increase the efficiency of the treasure compass, various kinds of okay. So it's literally just going to show you a treasure on the map instead of pointing like the little light arrow to the general direction. Automatically refresh cooldown period of treasure compass, you can start tracking next right away. That's pretty nice. That's a decent upgrade. That's a nice quality of life improvement, but there's many, many others that could be made. <laughs> Social interactions, make it easier, recognize, start playing with friends. Uh, request to join world. Player's nickname. Sh that's fine. Can we have more co-op improvements that make it so we can turn quests in? Or that we can, like, talk to NPCs or do anything like that in co-op? That's the major problem. <laughs> Not seeing someone's nickname. <laughs> Uh, party many wonderful stories. Uh, new version, you'll be able to complete certain quests. Avatars related to this quest will be unlocked. Oh, that's cool. Well, this is a cool, like, cute little thing. I like that. It's not something that I would say is a major improvement or quality of life. It's very cute, and I think I'll enjoy it, but, like... Can we have more improvements that are actually, like, more helpful? <laughs> what about improvements that we've asked for for a long time that Star Rail got way before Genshin, years before they did? Map settings interface will be added. You'll be able to adjust certain map domains, pin cards are displayed. That is interesting. Domains only, players. I kind of like the search for players. That's kind of neat for co-op. Region selection screen will be made more compact. That's not bad. Alright, Serena Teapot. Creation list. When viewing sets or replicas, you'll now be able to quick obtain furnishings that you need to purchase and make. Oh, that's helpful. That's helpful for the Serena Teapot, especially for the gift sets to get primos when you have certain characters and want to put them in a special gift set, so that's nice. Uh, to be create furnishing. And you can have a furnishing queue. Pretty good. That's a nice improvement for anyone who likes crafting in the teapot. That's pretty solid there. Things, okay, now you can, there's a better search function, also good. Landform landscape, so it does look a lot more robust and there's so many more options, so that's pretty good. New discounts will be provided for certain furnishings. Furnishings that have been sold in the realm from 2.8 and before. Okay. That's not bad. Less coins to get those items is pretty solid. Increase the purchase limit on certain furnishings to meet your decoration realm. Will increase to 10. I think it's currently 3. So that's pretty nice. So more music. Alright, quests will now be shown on the menu. Related quest items. Okay, I guess that's neat. Uh, red markers were added for reputation quests. Okay, that's simple. I guess that's nice. Focused experience mode. This will prevent characters or scenes from being occupied by other quests or completing current quests. This seems like a very dumb workaround to me. Like, why do they need this? Why can't they just program it so if you have an NPC that's dealing with multiple quests, you just talk to them and pick the quest you want. I guess it's something, but it still does not really change the problem of the fact that NPCs can be involved in multiple quests and you can't like find them or talk to them and it just will prevent you from doing what you want. Alright, I mean overall, honestly the teapot changes are probably the best. There's still none of the good changes we've been asking for for a long time. Treasure Compass is pretty cool to get more primos and for more exploration. Um, that's going to be really nice with the newer areas, especially since we should be getting a new area of Fontaine in 4.6. And then obviously for like Natlin, Golden Archipelago, or any summer events, um, if the Treasure Compasses do end up working in like a sub-region of those areas. 
but overall, still kind of disappointed. At least they're making some improvements, but man, if they could actually make improvements for things that we've been asking for for literally years, I would be so happy. Overall, I think these improvements are pretty good, and I do like several of them that they're making, but in the larger scheme of things and sort of the grand picture, there are a lot of things that I don't like. Number one is the focused experience mode. This is essentially an option that you can turn on to prevent you from starting certain quests with an NPC that will prevent you from doing the quest that you actually want to do because that NPC might be involved in that quest. I remember this problem very vividly when I was doing the Sumeru Archon quest. Things were getting really, really good, and I won't go into any spoilers, but basically everyone was sort of coming together, but I had to stop right in the middle of it to do Tanari's story quest, and that was super annoying and took quite a good bit of time, but I did it so I could get back to the Sumeru Archon quest and see where the story was going because it was getting really spicy, and then I find out that I also have to do the Nilu story quest just to advance the quest that I actually want to do. This was super frustrating and honestly it's just really stupid that this is still a problem. And I think the option put forth by the dev team to act as some sort of solution to this problem is either one, just very lazy, or two, just completely misdiagnoses what the problem is altogether. Because why does the focused experience mode even need to exist? Why can't we have the ability to unlock all quests, and when an NPC shows up in one quest, it doesn't interfere with another quest? This has been a problem that other games don't have, and the Genshin team that's working on this just doesn't seem to be able to wrap their head around it. There are many solutions that they could implement that would be much better than simply the focused experience path. It could be in the way that the quests trigger, how you activate them, what happens when you talk to an NPC, giving you some sort of choice to choose the certain quest line that you want to go to, and then go back to the NPC and then redo the other quest that you wanted to do later. There could be a ton of different ways that they could solve this. I think the focused experience way is honestly just not very good though. Because I believe that players should be able to pursue multiple quests with the same NPCs at the same time. Sure, you could make the argument that it might break the immersion if a story quest in one nation involves an NPC, and then all of a sudden they're in another nation doing something else, but you know what really breaks the immersion of a quest? When you have to do two completely separate story quests in the middle of your current story quest just to progress the quest you actually want to do. And honestly, I'm actually really glad that we have a focused experience mode now, or at least that we will sometime in the near future, because I'll definitely be using it for the new Archon quests. I just also think that it is super dumb that we even still need something like this four years after the game came out. Next, these updates are all fine and I do like a lot of them, but they really are lacking, and I think the quality of life dev team is just two college interns that put everything together in a week. These improvements are definitely helpful, but there's just so few of them and they're mostly about the teapot or things like cosmetic changes like color coding quests that it couldn't have taken that much time or effort. And Hoyoverse has plenty of resources to make real improvements that people have been asking for for a really long time, but at this point it just seems like they're choosing not to do so. Think about how many times we get those in-game surveys, and think about how many millions of people have been asking for things like a resin reserve system, like what they have in Honkai Star Rail, or a skip button for cutscenes, or for them to fix so many of the many, many issues that plague the co-op experience. It seems to me that the team handling Genshin just wants to do the absolute bare minimum, but I don't know if I'm being too harsh. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Because like I said before, I don't think that this is a resource problem, but if it was, I would honestly be okay with a few slow patches that are light on content like what we have in patch 4.5, if it meant that we could have a majority of the quality of life improvements that we've been asking for for ages. But again, I don't think that this is actually a resource problem. I think it's either a laziness problem, or more than likely it's someone in the upper management that just doesn't want to give us any real improvements. Though I am curious to know what your thoughts are, 
hopefully we will get a lot more quality of life improvements and things that make the game a lot better in patch 4.6, but we'll just have to see on April 12th. I love you all, stage awesome, and I can't wait to see you in the next one.